The United States was built on the foundations of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Millions of people have defended these pillars of our democracy. Please remember the sacrifice made by these Americans and make time to register to vote and obtain a government photo ID so you too can vote on November 3rd. Voting is a sacred right. Sacrifices made by those who so bravely serve our country should never be forgotten. Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, what's tax on a CARES Act? Also, the V Team takes a look at Alabama's one party system. And Mike Hubbard wants out of jail because he suffered enough. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Okay, time's up. He's wearing a pink shirt. Call the fashion police. Lock him up. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and today I'm joined by Josh Moon, investigative reporter and columnist at APR, and Susan Britt, my constant companion and research guru extraordinary. Well, thank you for having us. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Josh. Uh, it's not as easy as it might have been. Uh, you know, I just washed my mouth out and can't do a thing with it. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, we talked a little bit about this last week, but I, I want to reiterate because uh, we, we've learned a little bit more. You know, Mike Hubbard is sentenced to four years in prison, 16 years probation. He has, through his attorneys, asked that that sentence be reduced, Susan. And one of the main talking points they have is they say that Mike has suffered enough. Yes, they say. Well, you know, he lost his position as speaker. He lost his ability to vote. He had to sell his businesses. And I cited some book that a guy had written, not the law, saying that, well, you know, the embarrassment of the arrest on his family and his children, and it should be enough. Josh, you buying that? No. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, look, <laughs> as they have, as Republicans in this state, are very adamant to do. If you cannot do the crime, or you cannot do the time, do not do the crime. Uh, That's right. And, you know, we, we put people in prison for a long time over selling a plant or having a plant on their body somewhere. Uh, and Mike Hubbard stole $2 million. I am tired of hearing that Mike yeah. Hubbard is not a threat to anybody. He didn't do anything wrong. He, you know, or he didn't, he didn't do much wrong. He's just a guy yeah. that got misled or this or that. No, he stole $2 million of taxpayer money, $2 million. If you walked into a bank and took that much money, you'd go to jail for a long time. And that's what he needs to do. Well, and the interesting thing is Susan, the, the one of the things they say is that because the, the, between the appellate court who threw out one count, which was totally bogus that they threw it out, mm -hmm. and the Supreme Court that threw out five more counts, that reduced it to six counts. Now, so you take those counts out of the equation and you leave the six counts in. They said because they took those six counts, it should be less sentence. But Judge Jacob Walker III sentenced him on those six counts. Uh, five of them held a 10-year split sentence, two years in prison, eight years on probation, uh, all five of them did. One was six years in prison, split to uh, 18 months in prison and uh, 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 probation. So those counts carry four years in prison, 16 years probation. Those are the counts independent Independently, of what they threw Independently, and out. those judges, when they threw out the other counts, Absolutely knew that was the case. Yes, they did. If they didn't well, want him to go, to, if they wanted to reduce his sentence at that point, they could have thrown out those counts. They did. Yeah, they did. Well, I, I was first of all, I was told there would be no math, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, so secondly, you know, the, here's the thing that people need to understand is while, yes, they threw out some counts and all this kind of stuff, the sentence was already greatly reduced from the maximum allowable mm -hmm. on all mm -hmm. of those charges. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, I mean, he was. could have served dozens of years out, out of this yeah. uh, for, for the crimes that he committed based upon the sentencing that was there and, and that has been attached to those crimes by right. our laws and lawmakers. So yeah. it was already four years was pretty much a gift to begin with. It was. It was. And the thing is, <clears throat> and what we, we failed to get people to understand, is that the thug that comes up and robs you on the street is no different than Mike Hubbard. I would contend that what Mike Hubbard did is worse because he portrayed his oath of office, he portrayed his, the public trust. The difference is when Mike was doing his robbing and stealing and thuggery, he was wearing a thousand dollar suit. I think if I remember correctly, and don't, don't hold me to this, but I believe the original count I made on all of the charges that he was convicted on was 80 years. Yeah, there was 20, most of them carried a maximum of 20 years mm -hmm. in prison. So rather than the 20 years in prison, he got two on each of the counts, uh, uh, five counts, and then uh, uh, six years on the other. He, he got out easy. And speaking of, speaking of easy, he now lounges in the Lee County Detention Center mm -hmm. run by his good friend, Sheriff Jay Jones. Josh, I'm sure you remember this, and Susan too. I do. After Mike Hubbard was indicted and running for re-election, Jay Jones, the Sheriff of Lee County, did a ad for him in which he said, Mike Hubbard, or he said Mike, is the most honest man I know. Jay Jones I, needs some better friends. I'd like to see his friend list. Um, because that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's pretty pathetic. If yeah. he's, Mike's the most honest man he knows. Uh, but yeah. the uh, you, you know, look. Here's the thing. I, I don't want Hubbard to suffer any more uh, than I want the other inmates in there to suffer. Right. Okay. No. 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 no, no. And, Absolutely. And I think there are a lot of there are a lot of inmates in there that are suffering who shouldn't be uh, right now because of the conditions and some things that have gone on and we need to clean a lot of that up. So I, I don't want bad things to happen to Mike Hubbard. I don't no, want no, him to go no. to prison and have, you know, everybody jokes about what's going to happen to him in the showers and everything no. else. I don't That's want any wrong. of that. No. I don't want, I just want him to go to a prison where he's supposed to be and serve his time. Uh, right. and, and that's, that's all I, I, I'm hoping for is if for him to be treated as I want everybody else in prison to be treated. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I like again. We've always said you don't you don't lose your humanity. You just lose your freedom. And he was sentenced to pr prison, and he should serve his time in prison like everyone else. But the wrinkle is, and this is great. We only got about thirty seconds. The Department of Corrections has said that until Lee County sends them the proper paperwork, he can stay in Lee County until they do. No, the Department lost the of Corrections. <laughs> exactly. I mean, come on now. So he can sit there forever and just hang mm, at, he, at, at Aunt B's, you know. Yes, and already fried chicken in the jail cell. Yeah. Yeah, and, and DOC tells us that they have no authority whatsoever to tell the county when they have to transfer it. So there you go. What are you going to do? We're you, watching, though. Yeah, we're going to watch. We're watching. We're watching. Anyway, you're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with more news and opinion. Your career isn't a job. It's a journey. Your next job could lead to bigger things, and you're in charge of how fast and how far you want to go. At alabamaworks.com, you can connect with employers and start working right now. Then chart your path forward with training and career planning tools. That next paycheck is great, but it's only the beginning. Start a great success story at alabamaworks.com. The United States was built on the foundations of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Millions of people have defended these pillars of our democracy. Please remember the sacrifice made by these Americans and make time to register to vote and obtain a government photo ID so you too can vote on November 3rd. 
Voting is a sacred right. Sacrifices made by those who so bravely serve our country should never be forgotten. Hey man, what are you doing today? Um, play the game. Thought I'd go out for a drive later, maybe. Text some friends while I'm doing it. Scroll through social media. Kill a family four and a head on collision. Cool, man. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. I'm John Merrill. As your Secretary of State, I will ensure that all Alabamians have the opportunity to participate in safe, secure, and fair elections. Due to the ongoing pandemic, anyone that wants to be an absentee voter should select the box on the application which reads, I have a physical illness or infirmity which prevents my attendance at the polls. After enclosing a copy of your valid photo ID and following the directions completely, your voice will be heard and your vote will be counted. Through absentee, we'll see you at the polls. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You know, there's an old adage that you cannot know where you're going unless you know where you've been. And, and one of the things that I know you and I and Josh have talked about uh, over the last week or so, is that Alabama is a one-party state. It always has been. Mm -hmm. You know, it was Democrats for 136 years plus. It's now been a decade of Republican one-party rule. And, and we started looking at that and talking about that. And, and uh, uh, journalist and writer uh, Colin Woodward wrote a book called The Nations, and he argues that uh, there are regions in the United States that are really their own nation in a mm -hmm. sense, and that they are unchanged primarily since their founding. And he points out that Alabama, as part of the heart of Dixie and the Deep South, was started by, really, by plantation owners that wanted to follow the model that came out of the Caribbean and England, you know, where you had the elite planter group the elitists ran the state. Uh, they had a dominant party. They had a dominant religion. They had a class system for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And Josh, if you look at Alabama, even though we now have switched over to a Republican one-party rule, it is still ran by the top tier. It's still dominated by certain religions. It's still dominated by a class system. Yeah, it's a it's the same people. I mean, this is the you know the it, you hear the arguments back and forth about well you know when Democrats are in the state now it's Republican. It's the same people. I mean, they just changed because the money was flowing from one source rather than the other source. I mean, that's right. that's the only thing that happened. Nothing philosophically, nothing has changed among our group of uh, of leaders in this state. We still have the same sort of mindset. We still suffer from the same idiotic problems. Uh, and, and we're going to continue that way until, because I, look, our government's not set up to run the way we're running it. All right. It's not set up to be run by one, one group of people. It's set up. So there is compromise. Uh, and, and that's what gets you the best results for the majority of your people is that there is compromise among the leaders that you send up to what, you know, wherever your governing body exists. That's where, that's where all of these decisions come from is out of this shared sort of argument back and forth where you give up this and you get this and you give up that and you get that. And it's, that's just how it works. And that's always produced the best result, whether it be at the national level or the state level. And you can just look at the results in Alabama to see how not doing that affects you long term. But it does not, I mean, when they passed the 1901 Constitution, they basically made it so it benefited one party. At that point, it was the Democrats. So, well, honestly, the, the bottom line is it benefited the folks in power. That's right. Well, they, that's it. And what they've tried to do is divide the state along, you know, economic and racial lines forever. The Republicans just took control. And I would argue that they did that by making the Republican Party the white party and the Democratic Party the black party. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I, I'm just I, I saying that that... Yeah. I, I, I'll say this. I think that what, what, what ultimately happens, though, is if you don't answer to the people that, that you're representing, 
then you govern for yourself. And that's what's right. happening more often than not at, at the state level here in this state is those people in power are representing themselves and their closest friends. And that's who they're benefiting out of this thing. It's not, right. it's not the totality of the state. They're not worried about the people and never have been. They're worried about themselves and their closest friends. Well, I tell you that what the whole saying is that the, uh, at the state houses, <clears throat> when you're you know, out on South Union Street, <clears throat> you represent the people. But in, when you walk th through the state house door, you represent the power. <laughs> you yeah, know? Oh, Those no, that are in charge. And there's no doubt. And, and the reason for that is nobody is holding them accountable. When you vote for the party over the person, you don't hold yeah. people accountable. That, yeah. And that's, yeah. that's been the whole problem with this state forever. Well, and this is not a new problem. This is a no. problem going back to the original Constitution. No, it's, it's a, you know, party over the people. Yeah, I mean, it's it's systemic. It's it's almost as if, and I say it like this, <clears throat> it is written into the DNA of our ruling class. This is the way they've always wanted it to be, and that's the way it continues to be because that benefits the ruling class. And the amazing thing to me is that it is built on the backs of those that they want to keep down. That's the crazy thing to me. Well, the, I'll tell you the crazy thing to me is the, uh, you're, well, first of all, you're right, 100%, but the, the, the real crazy part to me is that so many of those backs continue to walk into voting booths and vote to keep the status quo. That's the thing of that's crazy Of course they do, of course they do. Because, you know, it, when you're an elite, you can ride their back until they fall down in the dirt and they're like, thank you, sir. Exactly, they're thankful I mean, for it. And, 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 I, I've and, never and, understood how people, how people lose their minds when they go into a voting booth and vote for a person who clearly has no idea how their lives are, what, what their no, what their day-to-day -day no, life is, no, or has no solution no. to any problem that faces them. And nor do they care. I no. always love it when uh, 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 politicians in Alabama get up and start citing their humble roots. And, and one of them was talking about that one day, and he said, I got a hard time with that because, you know, my worst day was when the... Uh, the caddy didn't show up at the Birmingham Country Club. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen, it is hard to haul, <clears throat> haul those clubs a full 18 by yourself. That is, uh, you know, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. <laughs> but the, the solution to this is that we hold people accountable who are in office, that journalists have to tell the truth. I, I get <laughs> so and sense that they, they call it fake news when you point out that they're corrupt. They call it, you know, that you're wrong when they point you point out that they're taking advantage of the system. I mean, you, you go into some of these bars and eateries and all that around uh, Montgomery, and they're sitting there dining with lobbyists and eating steak mm. and filet mignon and lobster yeah, I mean, and all this stuff. It's nonsense. Oh, it's been nonsense forever. And how many of these fools have gone on, on record and stood in front of cameras and said, I'm being persecuted because of X belief or whatever, or my fight for the people, <clears throat> and I'm going to fight until the end, and then the next week they plead guilty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth is, uh, you know, George Wallace was right. Democrats and Republicans in Alabama, not a dime's worth of difference between them. It's just about power. Yeah. But right now, we just have to hope for a better government. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. As we celebrate 100 years of women's suffrage, we reflect upon a time when we could not register to vote nor hold public office. But now, we have the privilege of representing the people of Alabama in the state legislature. We must continue to educate and empower women because together, we can continue to shatter records and overcome barriers. Register to vote and obtain your photo ID so you too can exercise your right to vote on November 3rd. What are you doing today, babe? I thought I'd head down to the lake with the guys, do a little fishing. Of course, none of us will be wearing our seat belts. I'll lose control of the truck, wrap it around a tree, and kill us all. Okay. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. I'm John Merrill. 
As we prepare for the general election during the pandemic, it is important for Alabamians to step up and become poll workers. Poll workers are paid officials who protect the rights of registered voters at the polls. Contact your probate judge to learn more or apply online at alabamavotes.gov. If you're 16 or older and enrolled in high school or college, you can apply to become a student poll worker by contacting your probate judge or our office. We'll see you at the polls. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Speaking of good government, I told somebody the other day I was praying for good government. He's rich and I'm praying hard enough. <laughs> uh, but uh, that may be it. There is two, are two years left in this quadrennium, Susan. And we know that the last year of the quadrennium, which is, you know, the, 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 not the upcoming one, but the one after that, they don't ever get anything done because no, they're really running election. for election. So this is the last year that they can actually get any big ticket items accomplished. Josh, I see you rolling your eyes already. I mean, it's just, I mean we, I, I, it just, it kills me that we're, we, we've thrown away last year's on pretty much everything at every level of government. It's just, you can't, you can't, you can no longer do anything in the last year. I, well, I know, and, and no, you might as well just say, y'all come down, hang out, party a little bit, go home, because they're not going to do anything. Well, and then the year after that, it's like, Oh, they're welcoming all the new guys, and they're you know they're partying up and showing them the ropes, and so there's only really two, two years. years out of four yeah, that ever years, get anything done if they get anything done then. Now, here's the rub. <laughs> it's, like, it's like office space. In a full in a regular day, I do about 15 minutes of actual work. <laughs> <laughs> well, my contention is I really don't want them doing a whole bunch. But, no, that's uh, true. Uh, you know, the thing is. We don't know where we'll be in the COVID-19 pandemic mm -hmm. in February, but, you know, uh, a lot of them are already acting like they're fine. But uh, if you look at the age of the legislature, there many of them are right in the uh, point where they, they really shouldn't be going out in public. But the only thing that I can say that they have done in the last two years of the quadrennium is pass a gas tax. That's it. That's the only thing that's going to move the state forward. They've done nothing other than that. No, no. I mean, Josh, what well, are we looking for? I agree. For? I, you know, that's, you know, they, they've done, you, you look around at, the, at some of the problems that, you know, I think the, you, we had an abundance of, uh, I guess, you know, and for Alabama, we had an abundance of money in the education budget. Uh, yes. So, you know, that, that kind of caused some people to slow down and, and, and I think ease back on, on some uh, things that need to be done. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, the, it, it, look at the biggest problems that we have. I mean, like prisons, for example. It took, yeah. you know, it's going to take, you know, Kay Ivey and the, and the governor's office just doing that on their own to get that passed yeah. uh, because yeah. nobody wants to touch anything. Nobody, it right. seems as though they have now taken on this mindset of out of sight, out of mind, and maybe you'll just vote for me anyway. Well, it really is back to what I used, I've always referred to as the make me state. Used to, they used to wait for the federal government to come down and make Alabama mm -hmm. do anything. Now, it's sort of like, they're just waiting for Kay Ivey to make them do something. You know, it, it, Well, she made them do something with the gas tax. That's she right. made them do something with prisons. Right. Now, it's following a pattern here. If it wasn't for Kay Ivey, not a whole lot would get done. And I really, you know, you look at other big ticket items like Medicaid expansion. Uh, you know, I just don't know how much the governor can stand being hit. I mean, is, if she's going to run for another term, I don't know that expanding Medicaid wouldn't be the death knell. I don't know. Well, I, listen, I don't think it would be a death knell. Uh, I think, first of all, I think that there are a lot of things now, and you see the fight currently, where all of a sudden, at the federal level, the Trump administration is trying, trying to take it, uh, uh, credit for pre-existing condition coverage. You know what I mean? Right, uh, right. And so there are a lot of things that over the course of the last several years have become uh, I guess, more palatable to a lot yeah. of uh, Republican voters out there. And I yeah. think Medicaid expansion, look around the country, look at all the red states that have passed Medicaid expansion and how popular it is. I guarantee, I, hey, I'll tell you this, you put it up to a vote, I guarantee you Medicaid expansion passes in Alabama by not a small margin. And I, and I wonder if we're just not naming it the wrong thing. I've always advocated for calling it K-Care because K-Cares. <laughs> uh, but... Call it anything other than expanding Medicaid. 
You know, right. you can yeah, even call it, it, it does, whatever you need oh, to do. It, just Obamacare look at the, plus some other folks, right? Yeah, just, I mean, the, just look at the benefits of, of, of what comes out of that. I mean, just look if, at what at, at everything that comes from that and tell me we shouldn't do it, and you can't do it. it. It is not a liberal idea anymore. It is accepted widely by the American people, and it is good for business. If you want to do a, a, a business move, it's great for business. The other thing I think they have to do, Susan, is get this gambling reform done, get it off the table once and for all. The, 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 the operators, both the Porch Creek and the track owners, have to come together and settle this issue once and for all for the good of the state. There's enough long. money to it's go around. I think we're long. pretty close. I think we're yeah, pretty close. You think so? Yeah. Good, good, finally. Well, we, we hear that the Gaming Commission that Governor Ivey put together is, you know, wrapping up their work and we should have their recommendations. But that's something that could, you know, if the Porch Creek would stand down a little bit and the, and the track owners come to the table a little bit, that's a deal that could be done. I yeah, mean, I, they're I, good I, think, I think that there have been uh, been discussions about that. I think that they are they're pretty they're closer than they have been in you know in a, in a yeah, very yeah. long time. And I yeah, think yeah. that both sides have have put up some good faith uh, there with, with each other. And I think they're the, the right parties at least are having conversations. Right. Well, that's that's a good thing. It's good for the state to get it settled, get that tax revenue, mm -hmm. and help the people of Alabama live a more prosperous life. And get out of the business of telling people what they can do. Wait a minute, that goes back to the founding. They, they want to tell us what to do. I do want to do a couple of things. We're, we're pretty sure on this, and we're not sure on some. People have been wondering about taxes on the CARES Act money. Mm -hmm. We have been informed that the stimulus checks that people receive, the 1200 or whatever they receive, those will not be taxed. Right. Uh, the unemployment benefits, however, the will be taxed but only at the federal level the, if you got the extra 600 that mm -hmm. that'll only be taxed at the federal level but not the not state, the state level, right because it's the, it's federal money coming in right now what about the uh ppp the uh, PPP. ppp it's not PPP. It's ppp <sighs> you you want to match it's covid days yeah okay, COVID right days. now my understanding of this and i could be wrong because it, it is tax law which is confusing if you took the ppp E money, P -P -P. P -P -P money. Right. Huh. Took the PPP money. That money is not taxable because it acts sort of like a grant. Right. However, whatever money you use that for, whether it was utility bills or whether it was for actual salaries, those items are not deductible from your regular income taxes. And if you're thoroughly confused, consult your tax accountant and see if they're as confused as I am. But generally speaking. It, it's untaxable mm -hmm. with the exception of the $600 and, and your uh, unemployment benefits would be taxed. Josh, that's that's the way we're going to have to end it this week. I, I, again, why I didn't go into tax law. I was told there would be no math. I don't know why we got <laughs> math. We are 50th in math. You know why? Because we are. <laughs> All right. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.